In this video, we will talk about addition to charts that are available in AwareIM since version 9.0. First of all, more chart types have been added to AwareIM, specifically bullet charts, bubble charts, range charts, bar and area, funnel charts, and scatter charts. In addition, new types of gauges have been added as well, bullet, circular, and arc gauges. Let's start with bullet charts. These charts are useful when there are current and target values. The, ch the chart shows how far away from the target the current value is. There is an example of a bullet chart in the sales portal sample application. So here we have the sales portal sample application. Now if we go to the team efficiency tab, we can see the uh, bullet chart here. We can see the target value and the current value here. Bullet charts can be used in queries, visual perspectives, or in tiles. Let's create a bullet chart embedded in a visual perspective. To do this, I go to some visual perspective and uh, add a content panel. of the bullet chart type. I am presented with a dialog here where the most important values to provide are expressions storing current and target values. For simplicity, I have added attributes to hold current and target values in the system settings object. So we will refer to these attributes in the corresponding expressions. And this is the result. Of course, you can specify other parameters here. For example, change color of the target or current values. It is also possible to embed this chart into HTML. We can generate an HTML code that can then be combined with other HTML fragments, like it is done in the Sales Portal application. Let's have a look. Here we can see that the chart represented by this fragment here has been added to the uh, header, which says quarter, set, quarter to date sales. Note that you can select this predefined generated code and click edit to edit it here. Bullet charts can also be added to a dashboard tile, as it was done in the library sample application. We can see the bullet chart here. And if we look at the configuration of this, we can see the expression for the current value and the target value, which is a fixed value in this particular case. Let us now show a bullet chart used in a query. Again, there is an example of such a chart in the sales portal sample application. It's in the graphs menu. So here, a manager specifies sales targets for his team, and we can see sale values versus targets here. Over time, sales targets may change, so we see diff different targets here.
Let's see how this has been configured. Let's go to the query that displays this chart. Go to the chart properties. And here we can, do, we can see the single series uh, of the type bullet. And we can see that the current value is def defined by the attribute total sales. And the current value is defined in the attribute sales target. Another new chart type integrated in ORIM is a bubble chart. We can see an example of this chart in the sales portal application as well. This chart can be used when there are four parameters that describe an item location on the chart. A category, X value, Y value, and the third parameter is represented by the size of the circle. Here, the, the category is the member of the sales team, which, which the circle represents. The size of the circle is the total number of sales made by this team member. And the position on the x-axis denotes percentage of sales made by the team member relative to the total number of sales made by the entire team. And the position on the y-axis denotes percentage of the completion of the sales target for the employee. Let's see how this has been done. Uh, this is the query that shows the bubble chart. We can see the type is bubble. Here we specify the X value. And then if we go to the series, we also need to provide Y value and uh, category and the size. Other new chart types introduced in ORIM is range bar and range area charts. They are useful when there is a minimum and maximum value. For example, it could be a minimum and maximum temperature during the day. An example of such a chart is again in the sales portal application. Here we have a chart that shows best and worst team members for each month. The worst performer has the least amount of sales in a particular month, and the best one, the most sales. We can click on an item to see who, the, who these performers are. To define such a chart, I need to define the attribute that holds the month in question date and then I need to select the standard chart type and a series of the range bar type and here I have to provide attributes that hold the minimum value mean sales and the maximum value max sales by the way you may have noticed that for some charts I select the standard type and for, the, for others, I select other available types. The standard category contains several types that can be combined and shown as series on the same graph. For example, I can show bar charts, line charts, or area charts on the same graph. Other types of graphs cannot be combined with other graph types. They either only support one series like pies or can only have series of the same type, like donuts. Another type of charts integrated into ORIM is funnel charts. Funnel charts are a bit similar to pie charts, and they look like this. Again, there is an example of that in the sales portal application. Here it shows perform performance of an online marketing campaign with various sectors showing the number of impressions, clicks, downloads, unique visitors, and finally sales. To configure such a chart, you need to define the category attribute and the value attribute. The last chart type added to ORM is a scatter chart, which is quite similar to a line chart and where you have to specify the X and Y values for each point.
I will now go through other changes and improvements integrated into charts. There were quite a few improvements to gauges. Gauges can now be used not only in forms, but also in visual perspectives. To add a gauge to a form, one has to create a cell of the gauge type as before. So let's go to the form of some object and add a gauge row. So uh, the, the dialog is the same as before, but there are many more options to choose from now. Let's select the attribute to hold the value, width and height. So first of all, there are new types of gauges here, circular gauge and arc gauge. So we will create a circular gauge. And it looks like this. Let's now create a, an arc gauge. And here it is. Note that for arc gauges, you can specify start and end angles. And for both arc and circular gauges, you can specify some text or an expression producing a text that will be displayed in the center of the gauge. You can now put gauges into a visual perspective. This is very similar to adding bullet charts. So let's go to some visual perspective. And add a content panel of the gauge type. So here we have the same options as in the forms. We can also generate an HTML code that can be embedded into some HTML. An example of a gauge embedded into a visual perspective is in the dashboard of the EC resolution sample application. So here we have an R gauge in the EC resolution dashboard. And if we look at the configuration of this gauge, we can see a gauge element represented by this HTML code embedded into another HTML, which adds the word health check. So just like with bullet charts, you can select this HTML code and edit it. We can see that the gauge has a, a current value expression, which just defines the current value shown by the, by the gauge. And we can see that the text in the center of the gauge can use value, which is can refer to the value of the expression. Another new feature is support for color ranges for X or Y axis. You can see an example in the EC resolution sample application dashboard. Here we can see that the number of issues for a team can fall within a different range, from a safe green to a dangerous red. If we look at the configuration, and we go to the query that displays this graph, and then to the properties of the y-axis, we can see the color ranges button, where we can define ranges and colors. So from and to and then a color. Yet another feature added to charts is the ability to display multiple y-axis. We can see an example of this in the CRM sample application. Here we have two series displayed on the chart 
and each series uses the same x-axis but a different y-axis. The green series uses contact duration and the yellow one contact count. Let's see how this has been configured. If we open the query that displays this uh, graph, we can go to the y-axis properties and we can click on the additional y-axis here. We can see that the, the, this is the main axis and, there, and that's the additional axis with different properties like color and other things. The most important uh, one is the x crossing value here. The value defines where the y-axis will cross the x-axis. We could have the axis next to each other at the zero crossing point. Let's change this to zero and see what happens. We can see two axes next to each other now. But in this case, we want the axis to be at the far end of the x-axis. This point is not possible to describe using coordinates because the, the x-axis shows categories, in this case months. There are 12 months in total, so we can specify any value larger than 12, for example 20. So this works. Let's now see what happens if we specify the value somewhere in the middle, for example, 6. The preview will not show it properly because there's only one month here. But if we go to the actual application and refresh, we can see the additional we can see the additional axis displayed in the middle. I will now quickly go through other improvements. Area charts can now be stacked, can show markers, can be smooth or step, like here in the library sample application. You can now control visibility of major and minor ticks on an axis. Pi and donut charts now support start angle and explode segment, as shown here. A line in a line chart can now be stepped. The radar charts now support area and bar.